yeah welcome to one and all welcome to one and all today we will be seeing the topics about operation of the synchronous motor on no load condition with and without losses then we will move on to constant excitation with variable load condition then constant load and if i am going to excite the variation that is if i am going to vary the excitation so these are the three conditions today we are going to see in today's session before going to today's class we'll just uh, find out what are the things we have uh, learned in the last class okay so in the last class we have started with the construction of your synchronous motor then we moved on to the working principle then we have seen why the motor is not self starting and its principle of magnetic locking and how what is the procedure to start your synchronous motor then what are the methods by which you can start your motor then what is the use of damper winding then the voltage equation of your synchronous motor where your current i phase is nothing but the vector difference between your v phase minus e phase by zs okay so today we'll start with the first topic that is synchronous motor how how it is going to behave on no load on with and without losses okay so now we'll just consider the ideal condition of synchronous motor that is on no on no load okay so i am going to consider the condition that it is not going to be loaded it is not going to have any losses at all okay so in this case i am going to adjust the excitation in such a way that my back emf is going to be equal to my v phase okay so it is going to be of no load condition when i am going to adjust the excitation such that v phase is equal to e phase so this is going to create the condition of magnetic locking so the magnetic locking between the rotor and the stator poles exists now and the synchronous motor starts rotating okay so from the phase diagram if you see this v phase and e phase though they are equal in magnitude they act in opposition so when you go for your vectorical difference so this numerator is going to be zero so your current which is going to be exist in the circuit is zero so this is the inference obtained from the circuit so what does it mean so ideally on no load the synchronous motor does not draw any current that is your armature current is going to be zero okay so in other words there is no losses so the current is not required to produce a torque to supply to the losses so this is the ideal condition wherein on no load the inference is that the current is zero that is the current drawn by the armature is zero but practically if you see this cannot be true because always uh, the rotor has to supply for your mechanical losses iron losses and your copper losses so in that case the current has to be drawn from the supply so as to provide the torque to overcome these losses okay so that we'll be seeing in the next section now so we'll move on to the same condition of no load but with losses so here what happens so the losses are going to exist so what is the main condition the armature has to produce the current so that it is able to supply the torque to overcome the mechanical and your copper and your iron losses so the exact magnetic locking that is the exact magnetic locking between your stator and rotor will not exist so the rotor will retard by an angle with respect to your stator okay the magnetic locking will exist but the rotor will retard with respect to your stator by a small angle called del okay so this angle is very important it is called as a load angle or a coupling angle it is called as your the angle which exists between the stator and the rotor axis so it is nothing but it is called as a load angle or power angle or coupling angle or angle of retardation or torque angle so now what happens so that is whenever there is going to be same no load condition but when there is going to losses which is going to be in the circuit so the rotor will retard by a, with respect to rotor by an angle delta now this delta will be sufficient enough to draw some armature current and to supply the losses so that it is able to overcome the torque due to the losses so practically here so the armature current is produced which is a very small quantity 
on no load there is no armature current drawn from the supply but here a small amount of or a small magnitude of the armature current is drawn from the supply so ia is very less and it will be lagging the voltage so this concept should be known okay under no load there is no current drawn from the supply whereas under load the current drawn from the supply will be very less and the magnitude of the voltage that is this current is going to lag behind the voltage by an angle okay now so whenever the now we have seen for the no load condition with and without losses now we'll move on to the synchronous motor on loading condition now what happens whenever the rotor is going to get loaded okay so in such a condition here i have just considered two condition one is your light load condition another is your heavy load condition that is from the light load i am going to go on load it and i'll see how what is the performance of your synchronous motor on load okay now let us consider the first condition so whenever i am going to uh, load the synchronous motor your e phase and v phase they are going to be the you are going to uh, adjust the excitation such way that e phase and v phase are going to be equal in magnitude but the rotor and the rotor is going to retard by an angle del 1 with respect to the stator though magnetic locking exists okay now now from the initial load i am going to increase the load what will happen if i am going to increase the load since it is a synchronous motor whether uh, the speed will change no the speed cannot change because it is a constant speed motor right so in that case what you have to do so you have to adjust that is the speed has to be maintained constant but due to the loading condition you have to adjust something so that it, you are able to maintain your speed as constant so in that case the only affectable parameter is nothing but your load angle delta whenever the load is going to increase the load angle increases from del 1 to del 2 due to which though they are going to be equal in magnitude the vector difference between this will increase is this clear so whenever there is going to be a change in the load the delta is going to get increased to compensate for the same speed condition so when the delta is going to increase automatically so the vector difference between these two increases so when the difference in the numerator increases we have seen already the equation ia is equal to e phase minus b phase by uh, v phase by z so this value is going to increase so the current magnitude is going to get increased so what is the inference from this on load condition the current drawn from the motor will be more when compared with your no load condition so the current drawn from the motor on loaded condition with respect to increase in load the current is going to get increased okay so this increase in current would be sufficient enough to supply for all the losses mechanical iron loss and your copper losses and provide the necessary torque okay so that is the inference so we have seen three conditions so one is your no load no load no losses current where the current is going to be zero whereas with losses the current is going to be very less and it is going to lag behind the voltage the next is your loaded condition where the current drawn is going to be quite high with compared to your uh, no load condition which is going to supply for the losses thank you mm -hmm.